Isn't this wonderful? Being greased like a pig, getting ready to get stuck in the oven. I've decided I need to upload more videos. More videos means more exposure, more exposure means more subs, and you know, so on and so forth. So if there's ever a subject or a topic that I just want to talk about by itself, like I used to in the old days, I'm going to come up here and talk about it. Also, you've noticed that I'm having a little fun on some of my other channels. If you're a friend of mine on Facebook, you've had some nice perks lately with some of the videos I've been putting up just for you. And I have been straight up amusing myself on my backup channel for no reason whatsoever. But I decided when I'm combing through stuff or looking at wrestling tapes or looking at wrestling footage and I see something funny or interesting or just plain fucking random, I just upload it purely for entertainment purposes. So that's really all I'm doing. There's no rhyme or reason. It is completely, totally fucking random and I don't even know how long I'll do it. I just figured since the channel is there just sitting there, I might as well utilize it with something funny or something to look at. So just random wrestling clips will be over there probably uh, in the future. But I just want to talk about two subjects today. Elimination Chambers are coming up in a couple of days. I'm really not even going to bother giving you predictions. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen? I'm assuming The Rock is going to come out of this thing with the WWE title, setting up his match with John Cena at WrestleMania. Basically, on Monday night on Raw marks the official road to WrestleMania, and I will have a new video, a new commentary coming up the night after Elimination Chamber, after Raw, to discuss all the happenings on the pay-per-view and Raw and what we're looking at heading into WrestleMania in the next seven weeks. Now, the first thing I want to talk about, uh, I've just kind of heard it from a few people on Facebook and whatnot. It's been around wrestling news or whatever. John Cena, I guess, might have had an affair. Uh, who cares? You know, who the fuck cares? I think a lot of people's uh, main concern was a lot of John Cena haters were going to use this as an excuse to attack him. Well, no shit. Of course they are. The, the guy can't. If, if the guy ties his shoes wrong, uh, they're going to use that as a reason to attack him. Nothing is going to surprise me. They can make as many little fucking YouTube videos as they want about how bad John Cena sucks and how bad he is for the WWE and wrestling and all that crap. I am absolutely immune to that level of retardation. Won't listen to it, and it doesn't exist to me. I don't give a fuck. Now, I recently, in some videos, have actually been in agreement with a lot of the John Cena haters of, you know, of the tiredness of his character to the point where even I am saying, okay, okay, it's time for a heel turn. I get it. I'm with you. I want this guy to turn heel. I want something different. If they're going to insist on keeping him on TV, at least make his character, you know, a little more fan-friendly, I guess, to uh, some of the wrestling fans that are really just sick of this character for the last 10 years. So I'm actually in agreement with that. I think it's time. This is the perfect opportunity. It's WrestleMania. He's going in possibly with a rematch against The Rock. If they try to do the exact same thing that they did last year, I think the fans are going to shit on it. They need to do something different. And what better opportunity than to make John Cena the bad guy? you got one of the biggest baby faces of all time in The Rock. You've got this uh, mysterious group, The Shield. There seems a lot, like a lot of elements that would make John Cena a heel in this situation perfectly. Will the WWE do it? I doubt it, but they better at least fucking think about it. So at least on that page, I'm in agreement with a lot of the Cena haters because, yeah, I understand your gripes with him. My problem is the idea that this guy is the worst cancer in the history of the wrestling business. You are a fool if you think that. You don't have to like the guy. You can even make fun of his character if you want. But be a little bit fucking realistic, would you? And if you think you're going to use uh, some affair that John Cena may or may not have had as ammunition against him, are you stupid? Hello? Have you met wrestlers before? Do you have any idea what life is like on the road for these guys? They are complete and total man whores, every goddamn one of them. You can't jump down John Cena's throat for this shit if you got a problem with him having an affair. The greatest, some of the greatest wrestlers that have ever lived have been getting complete shitheads on the road. It is not uncommon to cheat on your wife. And on top of that, I think you actually have to get some pussy before you can criticize somebody else for getting pussy. So watch who the fuck you're talking to. These pimply-faced little jack-offs with a huge case of summer teeth are going to sit there and criticize John Cena for marital or relationship or sex issues, fuck you. Who the hell are you to be creeping into somebody else's life? Maybe John Cena and his wife just didn't fucking get along. I'm really not surprised that John Cena got a divorce or for any other wrestler for that matter. Look at John Cena's job. Look at the schedule take he takes on. Look at the road he's traveled in the last 10 years. It has got to be impossible to maintain any sort of a relationship or family life or regular life in general when you're on the road 365 days a year. Imagine this. How many days at home a year do you think John Cena spends? 
Think about it. You know, with his crazy schedule since 2002 or 2003 when he first started getting hot, all the way up, up until now, how many days per year do you think he's actually sitting on his ass at home? That statistic alone, above all else, should at least earn your respect for how hard the guy works. So, you know, can you blame these guys for not being able to hold down relationships and shit like that? All I'm saying, it's a stupid thing to get on John Cena's case about. And it's just another example of how people go crazy over any little tiny tidbit of negative news that comes out about the guy. The fans that hate him go fucking ape shit over it. It's not going to make John Cena disappear. WWE's not going to fire him. All the fucking misbehaving that's gone on with previous world champions. If John Cena has an affair on his wife because he's not in love with her and they have problems and they have issues, that has nothing to do with wrestling. That has nothing to do with the WWE. That has nothing to do with the fans. It has everything to do with John Cena and his wife, and that's it. You can't criticize a guy for this and at the same time put a guy like Shawn Michaels up on a pedestal who uh, was basically a man whore. And made Chris Candido look like an idiot by butt-fucking his girlfriend right in front of his face. Read Bret Hart's book. He was pretty fucking open about what he did to Julie, you know? So, uh, you know, you can see that this is just a theme in wrestling. All the greats, all the loved ones, all the respected wrestlers. Everybody has their own personal issues. Everybody has their own relationships, their own marriages, and their own personal lives that they have to manage. Now, if you don't like what they're doing, tough shit. Now on to some more positive news. I have forgotten to talk about this in my last probably at least five commentaries, but I am totally aware of all of the good things that Diamond Dallas Page is doing. A lot of you keep telling me this, showing me videos, pictures, everything that he's doing with Jake the Snake Roberts and all this. Yes, I am totally aware of it. I've seen it since the beginning. There is uh, no need to keep reminding me, but I uh, do apologize for not coming up here and making comments about it earlier. Now, notwithstanding DDP's uh, attempt to get Scott Hall to come up here to that house, we'll have to see how that works out. I mean, I think as a wrestling fan and as somebody who's watched wrestling as long as me, I am completely fucking shocked and thrilled for the turnaround of Jake, of Jake the Snake Roberts. It actually seems like it's legit this time because this is not the first time this guy has gotten sober, quote unquote. I mean, shit, when he made his comeback in the 90s and WWE, remember, like 96, he was all about God and he had found the church and the Bible and that shit. It lasted fucking, what, four months and he was right back on the booze and the drugs and everything. He was out of the WWE and by another year after that, Beyond the Mat came out and you saw what a fuck up he really turned out to be. And I've always been amazed that he's not been one of these guys that has been found dead. He seems like he would be on the top of the list, but all of these guys keep dying and he's still here. I think he realized how lucky and fortunate he is to still be alive and, you know, he's finally at the age where this nonsense is over and he's at the age where, I mean, let's face it, how many more years is he going to be on this earth? 20? If he's lucky? He wants to make the most of the time that he has left and I cannot believe the shape that Diamond Dallas Page has gotten him in. I cannot believe his attitude. I can't believe how good he looks. He looks better now than he did in 1996. He looked like shit. He looks healthy for the first time in his life, really. I mean, I'm just so happy for him. I just can't believe that uh, this was even possible. I can't believe that Jake was finally able to wrap his brain around some sanity and actually get himself cleaned up. And, you know, for once, I believe him. I've never believed any of Jake Roberts' previous stints in rehab or, you know, his attempts to get clean or I've seen the light or anything like this. He's tried that shit a few times. It's never worked. But you just get the feeling this time that... This is it. It's now or never. Jake doesn't get clean this time, then he never will, and he really seems to be at a good place. He seems to be happy. He seems to be motivated. And if you would have told me 15 years ago that Jake the Snake Roberts' life would have a happy ending, I would have said you were out of your fucking mind. But it actually looks like we might actually get to say that. Congratulations, Jake Roberts, for getting yourself together. I'm telling you, you keep this up. This will earn you a ticket to the Hall of Fame, I promise you that, because I think the reason you haven't been in before is that the WWE has not wanted to trust you to be there sober or not fuck up or no show or, you know, show up fucked up and make a fool of yourself on national TV, on live TV. And I don't think they wanted to take the risk. So, you know, you keep up this lifestyle, you know, you are going to earn your ring, that's for sure, because you are one of the fucking greats. I am so happy for Jake the Snake Roberts, so happy. I hope that I get to say the exact same thing about Scott Hall. Let's hope. 
you know, I would normally say Scott Hall is hopeless. I mean, look at the shit he's been through. You guys all know his history and what a just a he's another guy. Why is he alive? How is he alive? How is this even possible? Normally, I would say Scott Hall's hopeless. Forget this. This guy's never going to get fucking clean. But I also used to say that about Jake Roberts. So if Jake Roberts was able to clean himself up, you never know follow this regimen of DDP that really seems to be working, you know, maybe we can have the same conversation about Scott Hall in a couple of months about how great he looks and how well he's cleaned himself up and how proud of him all of us are. So we got to keep our fingers crossed. And I really hope that if he's serious about going up there, you know, I, I know it's been online. You guys have seen the video of uh, Jake the Snake Roberts and Diamond Dallas Page calling Scott on the phone and getting him up there, I guess basically agreeing to come up there. There's, there's even a photograph of the three of them. So Scott Hall is there thinking about going going there. I'm not even sure the story, but whatever it is, I hope he gets cleaned up. I hope it means something this time, and I hope Scott comes to the same realization that Jake did and say, hey, if you want to preserve the last few years you have left on this earth, this is your chance to do that, and uh, make it happen for yourself and your family and all of your fans. It's the least you can do for them, and it's the least you can do for yourself. So I really hope that uh, this is uh, a positive step to Scott Hall, and if this all works out, uh, I mean, Diamond Dallas Page deserves all res our respect. I mean, what an awesome guy. What a great guy to do this. It's been a really true inspiration to watch him do what he has been doing. Way to go, DDP.